Austru, Austru, dragă trăguță, Mi-ai cerut ciora cu panglicuță, Și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea matale, Să-ți cumpere neica și sandale. The reason for my father's uh, almost execution by the fascist goes back eight months before December of 1943. In February of 1943, my father, who was the president of the Jewish community of Burgas, and he still had the department store it's called in Bulgarian Manufactura and Galanteria, which means soft goods, everything that you need for children, for adults, for bedding, for, for the house, except for shoes. Household items, including clothing. Including clothing. Gotcha. And the law said that my father had to, uh, uh, could not be the proprietor or the owner of a business. And my father took his uh, best uh, uh, salesman and also dear friend and, um, and made him into the store owner and my father was in the background. So the money really was going to my father but the name of the business was, was now uh, in someone else's name that was else's. not Jewish. Yeah. Very clever, yeah. very clever. Yeah. So, my father is in the store. As a matter of fact, I used to spend uh, every afternoon after school at, 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 at the store practicing the cash register and knowing exactly how to do the numbers and the credit. And my father was very generous with his customers. When a peasant came and said, uh, uh, I need this and this and this for the winter, but I have no money. My father would say, no problem. We'll just put it in the books. And the books of my father were very thick, meaning to say a lot of people owed him a lot of money. As a matter of fact, the first time that I went back to Bulgaria in 1975, my wife, Elaine, our children, Aviva, Ariel, Leora, and Eliana and myself, we drove a VW bus from uh, from uh, 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 Amsterdam uh, through a number of countries to Bulgaria. I wanted to show them my country and the place where I was born. We came to Burgas and I couldn't find our store because the communists in their uh, grand design of uh, doing things had taken like four stores, uh, my father's, sto our store, Malkoto Slonchi, which means the little elephant, because there was an elephant in the show window, and I used to every day uh, uh, sort of uh, prime the, the elephant to keep nodding and uh, attract attra 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 the, the attention of yes. the customers and their children. Right. Very and nice. The communists took four stores and made huge shoe store out of it, uh, which nobody visited. It was literally empty because the design of the communist shoes was not something that the people uh, wanted or, or bought. So I, I couldn't find the store because it didn't make sense. And I asked an old man sitting in the town square there, downtown Burgas, uh, are you from here? He says, yes, all my life, uh, 85 years, 90 years, whatever it is. I said, do you remember the magazine, the store, Malkuto Slonchi, The Little Elephant? He says, of course I do. I said, and then he added, by the way, I also owe money to, to Gospodin Asa. Mr. To Asa. Mr. Right. Asa, uh, the owner. And he said, the store is right there, and he pointed to the corner where our store was. But I couldn't recognize it because of what the communists had done right, right to, the, uh, uh, to the entire downtown. So this is back in 1975, we're reminding in 70, our uh, In 75, uh, we visited all, all the places that were dear and, 
and and close to me in my my past. You were about forty four years old. Uh, uh, correct. My first sabbatical from my temple, uh, Beth Tikva, Fullerton. In Fullerton, California, right? Here. Fullerton, California. And... Which you going, established. Which I... Uh, yes. I, 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 That's I, another story I've for been, in the next year. Yeah. Yes. And going back to February of 1943, mm -hmm. my father is in the store when the mailman comes and delivers the 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 letters or the bills or whatever it is for my for our store or for my father and among those letters there is a telegram delivered especially uh, my father had to sign for it from the commissar of Jewish affairs in Sofia to the commissar of Jewish affairs in Burgas. Do you know, the, can you still remember any names or it's too, too long? Uh, you were only 12 years old or yeah, so. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Belev was the one that the sent bad guy. the bad guy in Sofia. A Bulgarian pro-Nazi guy. Oh yes, very fascist. And the local commissar was a dear friend of my father and certainly not anti-Semitic, but it was a civil service position that he, he was given. His you know. job was at risk also. Correct. And the telegram said uh, from commis Chief Commissar Belev to all the commissars in the whole country, we have three weeks to prepare your Jews for resettlement in the East. And you mean outside of Bulgaria? Outside meaning, of Bulgaria. Yeah, meaning shipped to Poland, Poland. Uh, Auschwitz, uh, Correct. Germany, Treblinka, Treblinka and all that. Yeah. And he said uh, the specifications are uh, 15 kilograms per person and etc, etc, etc. All the details that we know about what Jews were given or allowed to, to take with them uh, at their deportation. My father looked at the telegram and it was addressed not to my father and the postman now there are two variants here. One is that the postman was so stupid and when he saw Evreski, Jewish, uh, instead of giving to the Jewish com commissar of Jewish affairs, gave it to the president of Jewish community. That's one version which I believe believed until about 10-15 years ago in my research. The second version, which is more realistic. Uh, realistic, is that the Commissar of Jewish Affairs in Burgas got the telegram outlining our proposed shipment. He was obviously not in favor of it and he couldn't do anything because he's a right. An civil employee servant. Is an order. Right. He sent it to my father telling the telegram office and the telegram office in Bulgaria was not the same as the post office. It was the like, like Western Union but separate entity than the post office. And he said uh, uh, this is for the president of the Jewish community. So my father got it. My father read it. My father sealed it. My father went to the postmaster, who was a dear friend of ours. He was living on the third floor of our beautiful house, rent-free, just so that we could, every night at 9 p.m., listen to the BBC, uh, the British Broadcasting Corporation, news in Bulgarian. Every night at 9 o'clock. Which was not permitted at the which, time. Oh, there was a stiff penalty for listening to BBC. But how, what's the connection between the postmaster lived upstairs and permission to listen or ability to listen? Uh, my father and the postmaster were close friends right. and my father took the telegram to the postmaster yeah. and said to him, uh, hey uh, Petko, uh, this is not for me. I don't know why. I says, oh those stupid mailmen or uh, telegram uh, office uh, people they, they don't know they don't know how to read Bulgarian so I will send it to the commissar mm -hmm. and then he opened it 
He read it. He looked at my father. He winked at him and he said, Asa, did you read this? My father said, winked back and said, of course not. It's not for me. So he said, so you know what to do. I will re-channel it to the commissar. Now, I think that the commissar wanted my father to know what's happening, or is going to happen, and uh, did made this possible. So, for all purposes, my father was the first Jew in all of Bulgaria to know that in two and a half or three weeks, uh, which was the time given by the commissar to the to the uh, commissars of the different uh, cities, towns, and all that, we are going to be on the trains. And my father called up Sophia and told the Jewish Federation, we call it consistoria or consistory, which is a French word for uh, federation. He told the consistory in Sofia, call an emergency meeting tomorrow morning for 8 o'clock. I'll be arriving at the 6.30 train to Sofia, the capital. Wow. And my father had an open travel pass throughout the war. Nobody else in Bulgaria had In a, Bulgaria only. In Bulgaria. Yeah. Nobody could travel anywhere without special permission. So if, God forbid, somebody had died, you had to go to the local commissar, get a special permission to issue a ticket for one day, three days, whatever it is, to go from A to B to C or whatever it is. My father, because of the general, had an open travel pass anytime, anywhere. He took the train that evening. He arrived to Sofia the next morning, went straight to the consistory, to the consistoria, and told the board of uh, of, of the uh, literally the conference of presidents uh, of of all the Bulgarian, Jews. Bulgarian Jews what it was uh, the left Shomer Tsair or the right wing uh, Beitar uh, a revisionist. Everybody was gathered there. Basically, he brought the light because if nobody knew anything. They would have been caught by surprise. Exactly, and he said, "Yesterday, with my own eyes, I saw our death sentence. We're going to be shipped to the east in three weeks or less, and I want everybody to recognize what we have to do right now and fulfill it." That's right. The skeptics on the board said, come on, Asa, you're dreaming. This is Bulgaria. This is not uh, 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 Poland. This is not uh, uh, Russia, or this is not uh, 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 Hungary, Romania, whatever it is. This is, by the way, Hungary saved every Jew until 1944. In March of 1944, at that time, the regime in Hungary changed, and uh, uh, the the new regime was 100% fascist, and sacrificed 400,000 out of 800 uh, Hungarian Jews in in the last month of the war. Uh, they the 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 Hungarian Jew jury was decimated by one half. Anyway, going back to Bulgaria. They did not want to believe my father because we were so Bulgarian, so tied up to the country, to to the uh, needs of, of the Bulgarian Jewish com of the Bulgarian community that nobody believed that this is possible. And thank God, Buko Levi, vice president of the consistory prominent historian. Could you tell us his name again? Buko. Buko is Baruch. Baruch. Uh, Levi. 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 Baruch Levi. He was a prominent attorney. He was decorated veteran from the First World War and highly respected both in Jewish and non-Jewish circles. He got up and he said, trust the words of this guy from Burgas 
because I've heard rumors from my sources and his source was none other than the secretary of Belev, a Bulgarian woman by the name of by the name of Liliana Panitsa, and she should be recognized and I believe she was as a righteous Gentile Liliana Panitsa. Liliana Panitsa and uh, she was the mistress of Belev but at the same time she was also uh, uh, passing information. She was not an anti-Semite. No, not at all. And Buko Levi was probably somebody who uh, had in the past uh, done favors for her and she confided in him that bad news went out from my office today and this was uh, the, the, the convincing voice so that the consistory will take action. And I will tell you in the next segment what action was taken uh, by the Bulgarian uh, Federation of Jews. Thank you, Rabbi Asa. Thank you. Well, these are live stories with Rabbi Asa in a New York Minute, or almost a New York Minute. Thank you. Ai mai vrem, ai mai vrea trecuță ană, ca să te îmbrac mai până frâmă. Să-ți cumpăr, să-ți cumpăr cercei mai ană, dar eu n-am de unde mai cuadară. Auz draga fata neki draga, a se răpuni o tăgiciană. Ișac cum nu sparale, să-ți cumpăr sandale. Buzunarele sunt goale dar Mai a fui trecuță Încă o băncuță Și băui în colinituță dar